Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a disassembly video for you on this little guy right here. This is the uh, Real Steel Knives Rokot. A rocket, uh, I suppose, is the, the, the Russian word for it. Um, but anyways, uh, first off, I want to thank Lamnia, actually. I believe this model to be an exclusive to them, or at the very least, this uh, this trim level, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, Lamnia is a store out in Finland, actually, that ship amazingly fast to the U.S. Like, holy crap, I didn't know it could be this way, UPS. But anyways, um, so yeah, that's, uh, th that's what we got going on here. Let's go ahead and take this guy apart. Interestingly, and very uniquely, this guy is using a set of slot head screwdrivers. And actually, I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to use a different set of drivers than usual. I'm going to use an iFixit set of drivers. Normally, I actually use like my normal driver bodies from iFixit, but I usually use Weha bits. Um, I'm testing out the iFixit set just because, well, I'm honestly curious. How does it stand up? How does it perform? And especially given that I need to use a different set of uh, bits anyways, might as well try it out here. So go ahead and pop the pivot loose, really? Wow, that's that's pretty tight in there. Okay, maybe I'm not going to use the iFix. It's, well, actually, maybe I need to use a bigger set. So I'm going to bust out the big daddy of the iFixit sets. Is this going to work? It's too big. Come here, Goldilocks flathead bit. There we go. And in fact, I'm going to uh, combine this, actually. Now we're, now we're getting fancy. I'm going to combine this with a driver from Weha um, because I'm feeling like there's going to be some torque necessary. So I'm going to use this driver combined with... Let's make that actually go the proper direction, shall we? Um, and then hopefully... Yeah, there we go. That's popped loose. There was some pretty considerable thread locking going on there, but we are uh, apparently thread unlocked now. Please tell me this isn't free spinning. Otherwise, we're about to have a bad time. No, it seems to be loosening, but holy threadlock a Batman. Uh, he says in a Batman mask. Irony of that is not lost on me. Anyways, I digress. Um, Let's go on ahead and continue. There we go. Finally got that popped out. Now I'm going to use the big ol' iFixit driver. The... <laughs> This is your big chungus. I, I fix it over here. All right, and now we can pop that out and look at the 15 gallons of thread locker used on this one screw alone. Holy cow. Now, uh, let's jump back to these guys down here. Is this properly sized? This is actually, no, maybe a little too wide. Let's swap to a different bit here. All we need is a bit of variation. Uh, okay, there we go. Pop that out. Um... All right, uh, it's a long screw. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get this guy out of there. Easy peasy. Do I love flathead use? No, I'm going to be real with you. I don't. Um, uh, just because flatheads are, uh, I mean, they're used in watches and such. They clearly work, and they do have some advantages. It's easier to clean up a stripped screw head or something like that, um, at least to a certain extent, and you can repair your drivers more easily than you can with a Torx, because uh, it's just a blade, right? You can just regrind it. But uh, nonetheless, uh, you know, that's a... Uh, it's a choice they made. One thing I'm going to do here is uh, highlight the pocket clip here, which is... Come on. This screw needs to go through this hole over here. There we go. And the pocket clip then is able to uh, not quite pop out because I would need to pop this part all the way through. But the pocket clip here mounts at the very top. And so there's no mounting hardware on the other side, but it is a bi-directional uh, bi clip. But now I should be able to pop this guy the rest of the way apart, actually, using yet another tool from iFixit. Um, which, by the way, in the name of propriety, uh, the iFixit did send these guys along. Uh, so I'm curious as to whether it's... Because I've been sending people to another driver location. By the way, if you're curious about any of the tools I'm using, uh, nickshabazz.com slash tools. But, you know, I've been sending people to iFixit to buy drivers and then elsewhere to buy bits. And I'm curious how the bit quality is, right? Okay. Looks like I've got additional thread lock issues here um, to try and get this freaking pivot out because they just drowned the whole thing in thread lock. Um, this is the story of a manufacturer who put thread locker in a river and drowned the whole pivot. Although life, a knife looks so good in photographs. Yeah. Anyways, I digress. That's a really old reference. 
Hi, Millennials. Good to see you. Um, all right. Let's pop that out. By the way, Millennials, guess what? Your references are old. The Zoomers nowadays have no idea what you're talking about. It's amazing. Um, all right. Let's go on ahead and uh, pop this loose. Aging is trouble, isn't it? <laughs> and I don't even know the half of it yet. Okay. Why is this not coming loose? Do I have to pop the clip on the other side here, too? Is that? No, that's not coming out. I'm going to try and push this whole, uh, this through. Maybe that'll help. No, it doesn't appear to be helping a damn thing, actually. Okay. So, we are hung up on the pocket clip here. The pocket clip is threaded. Why is the pocket clip hanging us up here? Are we hung up on the pocket clip? No, we're hung up on this thing, but then the pocket clip is keeping that back portion in there. Let me pop that loose. Good. Okay, now that's loose. Okay, now this is loose, and to reinstall this, I would actually just put this on the other side of the backspacer, and now we've got a left-handed screw. Okay, whatever. Now we're looking at multi-row bearings. Okay, I can't argue with that. Um, the, the steel that we're looking at here is S35VN, which, again, can't argue with. In a lot of ways, I, I kind of... Uh, this is an attractive knife. I can see a lot of... I'm picking up what they're putting down here. Um, you know, it's a very Russian design. As strange as that is to say, but it kind of is, right? You look at this and it feels a little Shiro-ish, a little bit. And the fact that the guy's name is uh, Ivan Bragin, it's, uh, yeah, it's smelling a little Russian to me there independently. But anyways, um, yeah, so far so good. Um, interesting design. It's a front flipper, but also with some competent thumb stud movement. That's good. I think this is going to be a lot nicer once I've cleaned it out and gotten rid of the earwax that Real Steel used to put it together to start with. That should make things easier. Whoop, stay in the frame there, bro. Okay, I'm going to push through the thread locker slash pivot. I say thread locker because it is mostly thread locker. There we go. Good Lord. It's also a tight fit at the top there. Um, this pivot feels like it's a little wider at the top. That's okay, though. All right, now I need to pop loose this washer. Go ahead and use that. All right, so um, once we're inside here, it actually feels a lot like any other real steel, right? Um, it feels <laughs> uh, relatively vanilla. We got ourselves a liner lock. We got some carbon fiber here. Is the carbon fiber the best ever? No, but it's not bad, right? Um, it it look, looks okay. Um, then they we can see they've milled in a Morse code pattern. And I looked at the uh, I looked up the Morse code on the clip, and it's Ewan B, uh, which makes sense because you've got Ewan B is the, the the maker of the knife. Right, um, but I haven't gone through the rest of it. I'm sure somebody in the chat here is going to know Morse code, and will be very happy to uh, explain to the world exactly what this means here. Um, zoom in there for you, buddy. Here you go. Take it. And let let us know. It is there a Russian Morse code? There probably is. Right. I, I kind of have trouble believing that the Russians are sitting there using English for Morse code. Feels like a dumb thing to do. Cyrillic's a different writing system. Look, I, I don't know. But anyways, uh, what I do know is that this knife is almost ready to go back together. And in fact, these backspaces screws are just eating themselves out of here. And that's completely fine. All right, uh, let's go on ahead and do a little bit of cleaning. The other thing that I'll say about this knife is it came very dirty. Um, I'm using actually right now some eyeglass cleaner uh, on a patch. And the reason I'm using that is because it, you know, can do a little bit of uh, extra degreasing and polishing here. Um, and it's very nice on a blade. I'm going to go ahead and just spray it directly on the blade off screen so I don't get my whole setup here wet. Just use this to clean off the blade itself, because the blade itself came feeling and looking very dirty, right? Um, and that's that's not great. Um, is it the end of the world? No, you're going to get the knife dirty when you start using it anyways, but still, dude, come on. So yeah, that's looking a lot better already, right? Um, so yeah, let's go on ahead and reassemble this bad boy. And okay, step number the one, we... I'm going to use this carbon fiber. Right now, what I was going to say is the way I'm keeping all this put together is by pro applying upwards force, kind of a, like a lateral stick-slip force on this to try and keep these guys in place. That partially worked, um, but not quite. 
Bro, come on. Am I doing this wrong? No, I took this apart from the back side anyways. The show side is not the free spinning side. But okay. Let's go ahead and push this in there. Oh boy. Okay, seriously? Maybe that's what the, the Morse code says. It's like, you're gonna have fun putting those back spaces back in. Oh, damn it, come on. Don't fight me here. All right, there we are. Those are in position now. Next up, I'm trying to remember which direction the... Hold on now. If I put this guy in my pocket, I need this to go. The clip needs to be on this side of the knife. Therefore, yeah, that is the correct direction of assembly. Okay, yeah, I'm good. All right, um, I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to use some 10 weight nano oil here and um, put a little bit of that right here. Uh, and I'm doing a longer line than usual so that I can get the multi row bearing systems and make sure that the multi rows all get oiled up, which is going to be good. So there we go, that's done. Now I need to do, uh, let me go on ahead and, uh, this is actually the wrong side, but whatever, it needs to be coated anyways, and I'll put a little bit in the detent ball hole and path, make that a little easier, and just a smidge there. Okay, now I drop this into position. Okay, um, at this point in time, are the thumb studs the stop pin they are? Okay, that's fine. Just making sure I'm not missing a stop pin here. Drop this guy on. Rotate, rotate, rotate. That's good. Now I need to make sure that this, so the D shape on the pivot here is, uh, needs to be clocked such that it is facing downwards so that I can do this whole affair. Oh, come off it. Rotate. Oh, did I not? I didn't grease the pivot at all. Hold, please. Luckily, I've got plenty left over there. Okay. Now we replace this whole thing. And actually, while the blade is off, I'll clock that downwards just to make sure. There we go. Clean that off the pivot face there. Now what I do is I place this back. This clip goes under here. Come on. Okay. So that goes there. The pivot is clocked in position. That's nice. Next thing, I put the carbon fiber into place, and I'll just go ahead and slide it under the clip here. Okay, this is working. I'm, 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 I'm vibing. I got, it. I got it. Okay, now I want to clean off this damn pivot because, okay, where did my big chunk of driver go? Here we are. Okay. Um, let's go on ahead and... Um, <laughs> I still think this thing is hilarious, right? This came in the kit. It's just like, holy crap. Uh, makes the LBHs look awful L, right? Uh, okay, uh, can I get any more of that thread locker out of there? Because, oof, boy. This is one of those moments where I wish I had a set of um, thread chases to be able to clean off these kinds of threads. Every damn day of my life, well, maybe not every day, but it, uh, a large number of days of my life, I wish I had a machine shop. Like, my life would be just so nice and given more complicated if I could just go downstairs and machine things, right? You know, I can go downstairs and I can make things out of wood, right? That's easy enough, and wood's fun, right? I, I enjoy wood. But at the same time, uh, the, 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 the possibility of just like, you know, right now I need a set of screws to mount my keyboard to my keyboard tray. And they're, they're, they're a long, weird screw that I don't necessarily think exists. I'm going to go to the hardware store and find out, but still, not necessarily feeling the whole chance of existence thing. It would be very nice if I could just go downstairs, measure up the threads, knock one of those out. And that said, I'm, I'm completely underestimating the skill required to do so. I guarantee you that I lack it, but at the same time, that would be very satisfying. Or similarly, you know, oh, I need a random, you know, piece of, even like a, a metal break or something like that uh, for sheet metal or plasma cutter. Ah, oh, that would be nice, right? But it'd be nice to be able to, you know, like completely excessively do the things in my life that I need to have, uh, like out of just billet steel, right? I would enjoy that. Okay, um, I am...
coating myself in Loctite here. One of the downside to flathead screws is they don't stick on the end of the driver. Okay, I'm gonna... You little bastard. Get in there. Okay. All right, so we tighten this up. Come off it. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the blade in now. Let me hold this a little better. Now I need to screw this into place. There we go. Took a little doing because of the clip in the way, right? Okay, there's that. Again, I can't put it on the end of the driver to Loctite it, so we do it by hand. Put that here. Come here. Go in your hole. Don't you want to go home? Happy Gilmore reference. That's another dated one. Gen X's, that one is more for you. All right. Yeah, there we go. Now we're in place. But you just got to stay very vertical with it. He says slipping off because I was very horizontal. This is one of the things that bothered me when I was putting together my uh, watch with the AWCI Builder Watch. I'm so used to torques that I'm lazy about angle, right, with my driver. Not as good at doing that straight vertical down thing. But that's okay. Here we go. Hey, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. It's working. It's working. All right. And... Oh, okay. So now where we at? Where are we at with this guy? Um, just checking the detent there. Good. Oh, that's better. Oh, that is an improvement. Oh, yes. Yes, improved. Okay, got a little bit of blade play, though, so let's tighten it down a little bit and see if we're still in improvement country. Just a little tiny bit of a turn there. Absolutely. Oh, God, that's better. That's actually pretty nice. I'm going to be real with you here. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's so good I went Mickey Mouse. That one's for you, boomers. Anyways, I digress. Um, This is Z. We're, we're all good here. We haven't had an intergenerational... Good time cleaning this one up. Uh, big, uh, I fix it bits seem to work fine, which is a uh, beautiful thing. And um, yeah, there you go. So I hope this was interesting to you at the very least. And um, most of all, I hope that you uh, have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of the day and that this video really takes off. Get it? Because it's the rocket. Huh? Okay. Oh, this has been interesting. Have yourself an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.